been excited with the Mark IV line of Ruger pistols ever since they appeared. I was impressed enough by the pistol that I am going to review, but I knew it was going to grace the stable. However, that has not always been the case. While I had been attracted to the Mark Target and hunting models in the past, the effort with disassembling and assembling these pistols always dissuaded me from plunking down good cash, even though I did so for a Mark III 2245. The new Ruger Mark IV changed all that. Stainless steel and wood firearms have always tugged at my sense of what a firearm's higher calling should be. Wood and blued steel is ideal, but stainless steel and wood? My oh my! The best place to start is with the basics of the Ruger Mark IV Hunter from the manufacturer and then embellish on the basics where I can. Now that I have the basics out of the way, let me dig into the details of the Ruger Mark IV Hunter. Stylistic design has always been a challenge for firearm manufacturers. While functionality is important, most shooters also want a firearm that is pleasing to look at, even with tactical based firearms. From the tip of the target crown barrel to the bottom of the grip, the Ruger Mark IV Hunter just stands out from the 22 caliber pistol crowd. The eye appeal of the Ruger Mark IV Hunter is outstanding, in my opinion. There is a sleekness to the design, 
carried over from the original in 1949, and which has brought many first-time and experienced shooters to the Mark series of pistols over the years. The contrast between the brushed stainless steel with blackened sights, bolt lock, ambidextrous thumb safety levers, trigger, and various spins and screws is very pleasing. The wood grip panels add a nice warmth and are sculptured well to accommodate all operator controls. It will be interesting to see how Ruger can better the current design, or even if it will. The only area of improvement that comes to mind is the ambidextrous thumb safety, and this is the only area of contention that I have with the pistol. There is more to come on the ambidextrous thumb safety later in the review. I could sum up the fit and finish with two words, nearly flawless, simply because nothing is perfect. The upper locks up to the lower tighter than a drum, as there is absolutely no play between the two. The brushed stainless steel of the upper and lower is exceptionally well done, and blending of the upper and lower finish is seamless. While the barrel of the Mark 300 exhibited a slab-sided barrel, the barrel of the Mark 400 is nicely grooved, which not only reduces weight, but allows the barrel to cool faster than a non-fluted barrel while adding a visual appeal to the looks of the barrel. The grooves in the 6.88 inch barrel are finely cut, contoured, and highly defined to the point that, I feel, a slight contouring of the edges might have been called for to reduce the sharpness of the edges. The target crown muzzle is slightly inset to help protect the exit point of the pistol from damage. Moving rearward into the chamber area, you will find that the Mark 400 is nicely drilled and tapped to receive an optic base, which is not included with the pistol. Weaver and Picatinny scope bases can be found via Ruger or other online distributors. Since this is the Hunter version, it would seem only plausible that hunters and other shooters would want an optic mounted, although the provided sights are excellent, which I'll cover separately. The ejection port allows for positive ejection of spent cartridges, just as well as it has in the past. The bolt itself is nothing new, it still remains as dependable as ever in chambering, firing, and extracting cartridges. A contoured ejection port and easy to grasp bolt ears allow for durable and reliable operation, round after round, just as it has in the past. The sight system is, by far, one of my favorites. A simple front dot and a rear bar, sometimes called the dot the eye arrangement. The front sight is a high vis light wave interchangeable front sight unit and a fully adjustable rear sight that incorporates a simple vertical bar. Place the front dot on the top of the rear bar and you are good to go. Ruger does provide two additional light pipes for the front sight, a white and green. A red fiber sight is shipped with the pistol. It can be easily changed out with your desired color. For the time being, the red pipe will remain in place. The key to success of the entire Mark IV platform is, of course, the recess button in the back of the frame that allows the upper receiver to tilt up and off of the grip frame without the use of tools. This simple one button takedown makes for a quick and easy field strip and proper chamber to muzzle cleaning. There is no longer a need for paper clips, mallets, or an extensive library of cuss words. When the Ruger Mark IV pistol is deemed to be safe and the magazine removed, the pistol needs to be cocked and the thumb safety lever placed in the safe position. Then, while holding the barrel with one hand, the thumb of the other hand presses a button inward to release the upper assembly. Note that the takedown button is under spring tension, enough so that the takedown button won't be pushed easily and accidentally releasing the upper assembly. Once the upper assembly is free from the bolt stop, the upper assembly can be removed from the frame. Once the upper assembly is removed from the frame, the bolt can be removed from the upper assembly. That's it and it is simple as that. To reassemble, place the bolt into the upper assembly. Place the barrel receiver assembly on top of the frame 
so that the notch in the receiver aligns with the pivot pin in the grip frame. Rotate the barrel receiver assembly down onto the bolt stop pin in the grip frame. Gently squeeze the barrel receiver assembly and the grip frame assembly together so that a click is heard and then check to ensure that they are firmly together and cannot be pulled apart. Replace the empty magazine into the magazine well. Point the pistol in a safe direction. Place the safety in the off position to expose the red dot and pull the trigger to decock the gun. Note that Ruger claims that no damage will occur by dry firing the pistol. The Ruger Mark IV comes with an ambidextrous thumb safety lever, not a button as on previous versions. However, there is a feature that some stone cold right handed shooters may like right side safety lever can be removed. The safety levers are extended and neither seem to interfere with the thumb of my shooting hand using a low thumb shooting grip. I did find the safety lever difficult to move from the fire position into the safe position when using the thumb of the shooting hand. I also had difficulty pushing the safety down with the thumb of the shooting hand. It seemed to be best for me to use the thumb of the support hand to operate the safety lever or support the barrel of the pistol and then move the thumb safety in whatever direction necessary. With that said, the right side safety lever did pinch my shooting hand on several occasions when moving the safety lever into the fire position. For me, the right side safety lever may be removed. One should be able to operate the safety lever without having to shift the shooting hand out of the way of the safety lever. I simply find the right side safety lever bothersome. The bolt stop lever is extended and should be within reach of most thumbs. Note that the bolt stop is a lever actuated device and not a button as was previous Mark II versions and is much better defined than the bolt stop lever of the Mark III. Unlike previous Ruger Mark pistols, the grip frame, the lower, is now a one-piece CNC machine lower. The lower of the target model is aluminum, whereas the Hunter version lower is one-piece CNC machine stainless steel. The grip panels are of wood with the Ruger logo. The grip panels are fastened to the frame with 3 seconds hex screws. The texture of the grip panels is, to me, a perfect blend of smoothness and checkering where needed. I was impressed by the grip panels of the Mark IV Hunter so much that I ordered a set and replaced the plastic grip panel of the Target model with them. I expect that we shall see more custom grip panels and full grips in the future. The lack of the rear takedown mechanism may result in wraparound grips becoming available, which will help out those of us with larger hands than some. Note that the grip and grip panels for the Mark III will not work with the Mark IV due to differences in operating controls, bolt stop lever and ambidextrous thumb safety levers. With all of this said, Ruger has introduced a very nice wraparound finger groove grip of wood that will eventually find its way onto this pistol. Ruger Mark IV ships with two 10 round magazines. Note that the Ruger Mark IV also uses Mark III magazines. The magazines have a polymer base plate and the magazine can be disassembled for maintenance or parts replacement. The magazine catch and release button, which is located just rearward of the trigger guard, is extended and sits very close to the left side grip panel. I had no problem releasing magazines without changing my shooting grip when the need arose. The magazines spring outward from the frame when they are released. There is no more grabbing the magazine bottom to extract it from the pistol.
I was not going to expend a great amount of time, as I did with the Mark IV target model, in testing ammunition compatibility. It was proven that the Mark IV will feed, fire, extract, and eject any 22 caliber long rifle ammunition that you can throw into it. Since this model was supposed to be a hunter model, I was interested in hunting type ammunition, and CCI and MIDI mag ammunition seemed to be a good place to start. I was also interested to see if the 6.88 inch barrel would be more accurate than the 5.5 inch barrel of the target model. Of course, most firearms are more accurate than the person operating them, and I expected that using a new set of sights and trigger might affect my accuracy with the pistol. As I get older, I need all of the excuses I can conjure up. The trigger is a curved affair with a serrated face that provides a nice surface for the trigger finger. And like the target model, there is about 3 8 inch of slack until the trigger encounters resistance. From that point, there is an ever so slightly feeling of mushiness until the trigger breaks clean at approximately 4 pounds and 15 ounces. The trigger feels light when actually pulling it than what was measured on my digital trigger pull weight device. Because of the magazine disconnect safety, the Ruger Mark IV cannot be fired with the magazine out of the pistol. The pistol performed flawlessly with the CCI and Minimag 40 grain CPHP. I did have one fail to fire with Winchester 40 grain CPHP, but it was with a single cartridge. I recycled the cartridge in another magazine, but it, again, failed to fire. This was through no fault of the pistol simply a defective cartridge. I was having issues keeping the sights in focus as best I could. Indoor fluorescent range lighting plays havoc with my eyes. In natural lighting, however, the sights are as plain and clear as day. I did have to adjust the rear sight up three clicks to get my desired POI, as close to my desired POA as possible. I was also shooting slightly left, and two clicks of right windage adjustment on the rear sight took care of that issue. I think that with a good pistol optic and a solid rest, the Ruger Mark 400 could show its true colors, which would be much better than what I was able to produce this range day.
I am not 22 Plankster, who has gobs of 22 caliber pistols. In fact, my selection of 22 caliber pistols over the years have been, well, wanting, you might say. Wanting for more, but being careful with my wanting. The Ruger Mark IV Target and Hunter are actually two pistols that I look forward to spending time with. Simplicity of disassembly and assembly, I feel, was a definite turning point in my impression of the Mark series of pistols. I won't be adding magnified optics on Ruger, Target, or Hunter, but we'll be looking at changing the sight system on the Target to something more like that of the Hunter to make my range sessions more pleasurable. I have a separate review on the Target model at some time in the future. In a way, I have to thank Smith & Wesson for their Victory pistol. As some have mentioned, the SW-22 Victory may have been the reason for Ruger to finally move forward with changes to the Mark pistols. Changes that, I believe, will be widely accepted throughout the Rimfire pistol community. I see the Mark IV as a beginning of a long history of use and customizing efforts for this pistol. Is the Ruger Mark IV Hunter right for you? I can't answer that, but that is a personal choice. Is the price of the Ruger Mark IV Hunter worth it, as compared to the SW-22 Victory or any other 22 caliber pistol for that matter? Once again, I really cannot answer that, because that is up to the respective purchaser or current user to decide. With my blatant high regard for stainless steel handgun, a proven reliability, and want for a pistol that is not ammunition finicky, purchase of the Ruger Mark 400 was the right choice for me. Now, I'm not going to say that the Ruger Mark 400 is the ultimate 22 caliber pistol. The trigger, although much better than the Mark 3, could use some work or even replacement with a better trigger unit. The ambidextrous thumb safety could be a little bit more friendlier to use than what it is, but given the distance that the Mark IV has come over previous versions and the fact that it is a production pistol, I can honestly say that it is near perfect for what it is. I am not a competition shooter or a hunter. I am simply someone who likes to put holes in targets the best that I can, and the Ruger Mark IV Hunter allows me to do that. So there you have it. My review of the Ruger Mark IV Hunter. I think that if you get to handle this new Ruger product, you are really going to appreciate what Ruger did with it. So, my friend, we have come to the end of this review. I hope that you will join me for future reviews of guns and gear. Until then, be safe out there.